Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I am going to continue my coverage of the basic rules for the Majestic Fantasy RPG by Robert S. Connolly. Uh, I'm going to have the pleasure of uh, playing in one of his games at ShireCon uh, this upcoming weekend, uh, so I believe it is uh, Saturday. I'll be playing in his game and uh, my first time playing the fantasy RPG, uh, the Majestic Fantasy RPG. So I'm really excited about that. And um, I wanted to continue coverage leading up into that so that uh, we can uh, so that we can share some of the content that is in this game system. And then I will give you an after convention uh, review of how everything went uh, by Sunday. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in. So this is episode two of my continuing coverage, and I'm going to focus on classes and backgrounds today. So here we go. And jumping right into here. So character classes. There are four categories of character classes in the Majestic Fantasy RPG. Clerics, fighting men, Magic users and rogues. In the basic overview, one class from each cat is detailed. That's category, uh, by the way. Um, burglar, cleric of Deliquane, fighter and magic user. At fifth level, the character has an opportunity for additional responsibility that will be led to more adventures and serve as a stepping stone on their path to leave a mark of, on the world. The referee should tailor this to the circumstances of the character and their campaign. Ability bonuses. Things that a character can do outside of combat and spell casting are called abilities. For example, climbing, haggling, locution, and stealth. Each class gives bonuses to various abilities and also gives a smaller number of free bonuses that can be distributed among any ability in this game. Each bonus gives a plus one to the d20 roll to succeed at a task using the ability. Example, Ledger Domain. This is in addition to the bonus given by an attribute that is re relevant to the task. Each class lists the total number of ability bonuses at each level. When the bonuses are distributed, no more than half of the total number of ability bonuses, rounded down, can be applied to a single ability. For example, a burglar at fourth level has a total of 16 bonuses to distribute. No more than plus eight can be applied to a single ability like stealth. Okay, so yeah, so they can't have more than half their total applied to any one particular ability. Love the artwork, by the way. Uh, the burglar. So let's take a look at the burglar or rogue. Burglars are trained in the abilities used by secret societies, thieves, guilds, and gangs. They learn these abilities at the expense of combat expertise. Burglars must possess a dexterity score of 10 or better. Burglars have the following. They gain 1d6 minus 1 hit point per level, minimum of 1 hit point. Fight using the magic user's combat table. Can use leather armor and shields. Can use the following weapons. Hand axe. Club, dagger, light mace, light uh, staff, short sword, um, and uh, what not. Sorry, I had to take a look at my uh, pager here. The burglar starts with uh, eight abilities. I'm sorry, I skipped. The burglar makes the attack rolls at a disadvantage with any other weapons. A burglar starts with eight ability bonuses that are distributed amongst the following burglar abilities. Climbing, eavesdropping, ledger domain, um, perception, and stealth. 
the burglar earns four additional burglary bonuses for every three levels. A burglar starts with two free ability bonuses that can be applied to any other ability and gains two free bonuses every three levels. At all levels, no, ma uh, no more than half of the character's ability bonuses can be spent on a single ability. Prime Attribute Bonus. If Dexterity is 13 or greater, the character earns plus 5%. At level 5, 1 to 6 uh, individuals from the local criminal underworld will seek out the burglar to become a henchman. If the local boss is not an enemy, the burglar will be offered a neighborhood or small rural territory where they have the exclusive right to conduct jobs. So here we have the uh, burglar ability bonuses. So at level one, they have plus eight bonus, uh, a burglary bonus and plus two free bonus. Uh, that means that plus two free, they can take from other character classes. Uh, so that's a, you know, that gives them a little bit more flexibility. Burglar advancement table. I'm just going to turn this volume down so it doesn't keep on distracting me. Sorry. Um, burglar advancement table. So uh, they go to second level by 1750 XP. And they go to um, third by 3500, fourth by 7000, and fifth by 15,000 XP. Um, their saves are 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11. Uh, their plus to hit starts kicking in around level 4 and 5. Burglary ability bonuses can be distributed among the following skills. Climbing, eavesdropping, ledger, domain, uh, perception, and stealth. I already read this to you uh, above. Uh, they're just restating it here. So now clerics. Clerics of Deliquain. <coughs> Deliquain clerics represent a militant arm of the church. Their duty is to adventure against injustice, fight those who prey on the innocent, and try to heal those who were hurt. There is a great animity between the Church of Deliquain and the Tyranny Church of Seraph. Clerics have the following. They gain D6 hit points per level. Fight using the cleric combat table. Can use any armor, can use any weapon. Plus two bonus to saving throws versus being paralyzed or poisoned. Can use a shield of faith, see below. Can memorize and cast divine spells. Can cast divine rituals using any spell on their spell list equal to one half the highest level spell they can cast rounded down. They can turn undead starting at first level. Has a religious rank with the Church of Deliquain. Their prime attribute bonus is uh, for wisdom of 13 or greater. They earn an extra 5% uh, experience. At third level, clerics of Deliquain can cast prayer once a day. This version of prayer affects a sphere within 50 feet radius. Prayer at third level, range 30 feet, duration to the end of the following round. The bonus uh, bestows a short-term divine blessing to help a spell or attack succeed. Prayer affects a 50-foot radius sphere. This causes a saving throw penalty to all creatures in that area. Their penalty is minus one plus any additional minuses for every 10 caster levels. In addition, all allies of the caster gains a plus one to hit for the spell's duration as long as they are inside the area of the spell. At fifth level, a elder of Deliquain will assign a rectory to the cleric. It will take the form of either a small neighborhood church in a town or city or a small rural church attached to the castle or keep. The rectory comes with a circuit of local hamlets and small villages where the additional services are held. 
uh, and you can see their their tables here. I'm not going to get um, dig right into here because I want to move on to the other two character classes. But you can see they do not start with uh, first level spells. Uh, at at first level, they gain them at second, then third, uh, fourth is when they gain a uh, second level spell. Uh, and their first ritual, and uh, at fifth level they have uh, a total of uh, two first level spells and two second level spells, plus the ritual that they have. The Church of Deliquain considers priests and clerics that are first to second level to be acolytes or initiatives. At third level they are considered full priests. Ability Progression Clerics of Deliquane gain a bonus to theology. They start with two free ability bonuses and gain one free ability bonus every two levels. At all levels, no more than half a character's ability bonuses can be spent on a single ability. So they can, um, they can banish undead, as you can see at first level. Um, if the result is equal to or greater than the number shown on the table, 2d6 undead are turned and will flee for 3d6 rounds. If the table indicates a T, 2d6 undead are automatically turned and will depart for 3 to 6 rounds. Uh, so you can see at first level they have to roll above a 10 uh, in order to turn 2d6 undead. Um, that's actually pretty substantial. That's a, a good amount um, that they're able to uh, send off. Shield of Faith. Against any spells or spell effects, the Shield of Faith confers a plus four chance of magical immunity per level until fifth level when it reaches a plus 20. This immunity may be dropped at will by the cleric to allow beneficial spells to cast on them. It takes one round to restore the shield. If the cleric is knocked unconscious, the shield of faith drops one round later. See magical immunity for full details. Fighting men. Fighters are warriors trained in the battle and use armor and weapons. Uh, you're the front line adventure party gained toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with dragons and goblins and evil cultists and yada yada. All right, it's a fighter. Um, fighters have the following. They gain D6 plus two hit points per level. Fighters use the fighter combat table. They can use any weapon or shield uh, or armor. The fighters to hit bonus is added to their initiative roll. Um, that's interesting. All right. Um, and they're the only one that gets a to hit bonus at every single level, right? So they're plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and plus five. Um, they can use melee weapons to attack a number of creatures with a total hit dice equal to the fighter's level. There is always a minimum of one allowed attack. All right, so that's another interesting thing, right? So a fighter at second level can get two attacks against a first level creature. Um, and at, at third level, it's still two, but at fourth level, it would be, um, it would be four first level, two second level, and, um, and still one third or fourth level. Um, so I like that. That's actually pretty interesting. Uh, prime attribute bonuses, a strength of 13 or higher, gains a plus three, uh, plus five percent, sorry. Um, at fifth level, a fighter can form or will be offered captaincy of a small independent command of 20 warriors. Their ability, um, their ability uh, progression, all fighting men ha uh, gain a bonus to athletics. They start with two free ability bonuses and gain one free ability bonus every three levels. At all levels, no matter uh, no more than half of the character's ability bonuses can be spent on a single ability. Magic users. Magic users represent the lone practitioner of arcane magic outside of the established orders. Magic users have no formal organization or ranks other than master and apprentice. Some associate in loose fellowships 
known as circles. So they gain 1d6 minus 1 hit points per level, um, the same as burglars or rogues. Fight using the magic user combat table. Can use any armor, can, cannot use any armor or shield permitted to use a dagger, staff, and darts. Usually only other weapon will cause the attack to be rolled at a disadvantage. They gain plus two to saving throws versus spells. They can memorize arcane spells with a spell book and cast arcane spells. They can cast arcane rituals from a spell book equal to half the highest level spell they can memorize uh, rounded down. Prime bonus is for intelligence, 13 or higher, plus 5%. Experience at fifth level, magic users will attack one to six, uh, attract one to six individuals desiring to become apprentices or assistants. Their ability progression, tomatology, um, they gain plus one uh, for research. Uh, tomatology is plus one, plus one, two, two, and then plus three. Uh, research is plus one, 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 plus two, plus two. And the free bonuses are plus two, plus two, plus three, three, and then plus four. Their, um, their spells, they start with uh, one spell at first level. They have two first level spells at second. They have two first and one uh, second level at third, plus they gain a ritual. At fourth level, they have three plus uh, three first level, two second level, plus that a ritual that it still carries through. Um, and then at fifth, they have four first level spells, two second level spells, one third level spell, plus that ritual. So now we're gonna get into character backgrounds. All right, I'm gonna check our, our time here. Uh, so we're about 17 minutes in. So yes, I will spend some time with character backgrounds. So <clears throat> these should go much, much faster. Humans, all right, humans are the dominant culture in the majestic fantasy realms. Their combination of hardiness and birth rate and intelligence has allowed them to spread to every corner of the land. Humans gain a plus one add to the attribute of their choice. They gain 15% to all earned experience and their base movement is 120 feet per round. Elves uh, were created as the shining example of the potential of life. Uh, elves are immortal and do not age after reaching adulthood. Elves gain a plus two to dexterity, plus one to constitution, and plus two to charisma. If a player rolls less than a 10 charisma for an elf character, they may continue rolling until they roll a 10 or higher. Um, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty substantial um, until you run a ten, roll a 10 or higher. I would just say if you don't roll a 10, you get a 10. Um, Elves are immune to normal disease. Elves can heal at double the normal rate. They are completely healed after two weeks of rest. Elves cannot use any planar abilities or leave the world for any plane of existence other than the elemental plane. So that's an interesting thing too. Elven base movement is 120 feet. Half elves. Half-elves are long-lived and have doubled the lifespan of humans. Half-elves get a plus one to dexterity and a plus one to charisma. Uh, they also have that minimum roll of a 10 uh, for charisma, and they can re-roll until they get a 10 or higher. They also have a base movement of 120 feet. Halflings. Halflings uh, are long-lived and have the double lifespan of humans. They get a plus two to dexterity. They get a plus four to any stealth ability. They are small in stature and armor costs only half. The following are considered two-handed weapons for halflings. A battle axe, a club, a war hammer, a heavy mace, a long sword, and a staff. When halflings use normal 
two-handed weapons, uh, two-edged sword, pole arm, etc. They make uh, they make their to hit at a disadvantage. The following are considered one-handed weapons, daggers, light maces, short swords, and hand axes. The following missile weapons can be used, a hand axe, a short bow, a light crossbow, a dart, and a sling. Halfling base movement is 90 feet per round. Dwarves are long-lived and have triple the lifespan of humans. Dwarves get two, a plus two to constitution and a minus one to charisma. They gain a plus two to all athletic abilities. They move at a base of nine, uh, 90 feet per round. So character abilities. I'm going to get into this in the next video. I'll go into the abilities and, and then the, the various skills uh, that are in there. But um, you see some, some differences between your, your very typical Dungeons and Dragons um, yeah, and certainly basic Dungeons and Dragons, and, and this here, right? So you have uh, a good mix of some uh, different systems to make this play very differently from, let's say, um, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the Beckme, the basic from 1983. So this is certainly going to play a lot differently. Well, my thing is pinging a lot today. Uh, but uh, again, it looks really, really good. Uh, I'm, I'm anxious to play it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to most likely play a rogue if I get the chance, and hopefully a halfling rogue because that's always like my go-to for um, for a new system. And uh, so I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm going to actually start creating a character, and that will be my next video is I will, um, you know, I'll look at those abilities and everything for a character, and I'm going to create a halfling burglar character for, um, you know, hopefully in time for my game on, uh, on Saturday. So, as always, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry about the few interruptions there. And um, as always, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or at a convention table sometime soon and I will give you some uh, some more previews of the uh, of the convention coming up uh, between now and Friday I'm still working on my adventure and tweaking it out and and seeing how it'll go off that's my shadow dark adventure that I'm running my uh, gangbusters adventure is up and ready to go I still have three seats open for that or two seats open for that game. Um, I can definitely run it with just three players, but I prefer two. Hopefully there'll be some walk-ins. Uh, if anybody uh, is still looking for a slot uh, to sit down at, um, that Gangbusters adventure is tried and true. Uh, everyone that has ever played it at a convention has a, had a really good time with it. Uh, so I'm excited about running it. And uh, it will be probably one of the last times that I actually run it, um, other than uh, page um, page two in January, and right now that's not filled at all at uh, page two. So I might actually consider switching that up if it doesn't um, if it doesn't open up and have more people sign up for it. So um, again, thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, I have to I guess take care of some business here. So you'll have a good one. Take care.